So I've decided to uh, answer requests for me to just paint. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint. Uh, let me explain what I'm working on. This is an artist from Japan. I'm not going to pronounce her name because I'm not really sure how and I don't want to embarrass myself or show no respect. This is a woman I happen to respect very, very much. She's uh, been through a lot. She's been through a lot in her life. A lot of rejection. A lot of very harsh criticism. Um, a lot of just needless events went on in her life that just broke her heart and drove her into devastation several times. So she's been living in a mental institution for about 40 years. But she's extremely productive. She stays there so she doesn't kill herself um, at night. And then during the day, she goes to her studio where she just pumps out paintings. She has a strong work ethic. She's focused on her goals. And she's reached them. And I think she's 83. I'm not sure. She's in her 80s. And last year when I was in New York, she had um, a massive opening going on in New York. And I didn't know about it. And I'm very upset with myself. I was so focused on my own work that I missed this wonderful opportunity at the Whitney. It was also, there was a show going on at the Tate in, in England, and um, Gogashian was involved, I believe. There were, she had shows all over the world, and it was her body of work. And for this one particular event, worldwide event, she did over 100 pieces. So, and she worked diligently at it for, I can't remember how long, but it was a, it was a bit of time. Um, three years? It was... It was some time, and so I have a deep amount of respect for her, and I love her face, and the way she dresses, and the way she holds herself. So I'm doing, I'm doing this portrait of her, and it's not something I'm normally interested in, but um, I have deep affection for someone I've never met. Um, but today, anyway, I'm doing black outlines of the images she uses in her painting, and then I'm putting in. Uh, Gamblin paints radiant blue mixed with a couple of other blues and a little bit of white to fill, not just fill this in, but to build a pattern of color. And then eventually I'm either going over it in white or in yellow, which are colors that she uses in her, the basis for her paintings. Her paintings are quite complex and really interesting. Um, so that's what I'm going to shut up and put my headphones on and just paint.
Okay, I unplugged my CD player by mistake. Now you're watching me make um, black outlines. They're not, although I'm following my idea, it's my idea of her lines. I've watched her paint. I know how loose she is. She is very loose. She, she's, you know, she's, I believe she's 83 or 84 now. She paints with her canvases flat and has to, she can, she has trouble standing. But she stands and she does these probably five foot by five foot canvases and bigger. Um, they're really, oh, they're so involved. And layer on top of layer on top of a layer. And she uses acrylic, unlike me, I use oils with acrylic and aerosol. But I'm still, I'm trying to follow her lines. And I'm just doing them very quickly from memory. And then I'll go back in with blues. Now that I've got this plugged in, I'll get back to it. and plugged myself again. Unfortunately, I use an old CD player so I can listen to books. <laughs> it's not exactly convenient. Now, as you can see, I'm putting in a darker blue as opposed to lighter blue. I do the darker blues on black. And then when I go in to put a lighter color, the light will scoop behind because I'm using Neo, Neo McGill and it'll pop out. Sometimes the colors, the top colors, the lighter colors, look like they're glowing because, of, because I do this. It's so cool. The lines that I'm filling in now, or the spaces, they are all coincidental. When I first start, my paintings look like Franz Klein with the black lines and the, you know, the movement. And they tend to match up 
to the subject matter of the reference pretty easily. Just It's just really by coincidence. But right now I'm following her lines, what she would do on a canvas, even with the blue. I'm not filling in completely, because she doesn't. She leaves spaces between the paintbrush strokes and between the paint colors. It's, I, I love her work. I really understand it on an ethereal level. So the lighter, the lighter blue is actually radiant blue, Gamblin's radiant, radiant blue, and white. And apparently I got some black mixed in there, which I didn't need. It's okay. Even in the black, I put in black. That's what my friend here would do. Alright, I think I've got a lot to do, so I'm going to go ahead and work some more, and then I'll turn the camera back on, and you can watch me put more layers on. And maybe I'll have something really profound and interesting to say, although I doubt that. But we will try. I'm going to fill in some of her dots with a blue-white. I'm going to try and get some more uh, cadmium orange and cadmium reds in her outfit and finish up the blacks. The black outlines, which are kind of everywhere. I'm going to have to focus. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Ciao.